Hi, and welcome to lesson two in our kinetics, thermodynamics, and equilibrium unit. Lesson two is going to deal with kinetics, which you might remember is the study of the energy changes that take place over the course of a chemical reaction. This is a picture of thermite. Thermite is a powdered mixture of iron and aluminum. And when thermite's like this, there's really no particular danger, as long as you keep it away from a strong oxidizing agent. When you put that strong oxidizing agent in contact with the thermite, you get this. The thermite reaction is one of the hottest chemical reactions that we're aware of. It produces a tremendous amount of heat, so hot in fact that the iron in the mixture is melted down and pours out of the reaction vessel as molten iron. It's a very, very cool reaction, but it's also incredibly dangerous because it is so hot. That's the kind of thing that kinetics deals with. It deals with the energy absorption and release during chemical reactions. So we know that during a reaction, reactants are converted into products. But what happens to the energy over the course of that reaction? Fundamentally, there are two things that can happen. The energy can be released. That's what's called an exothermic reaction. And so this graph is showing you the energy stored in reactants and products. And in exothermic reaction, our products have less energy because some amount of energy was released. Or it can be absorbed, which is what we call an endothermic reaction. And you can see that graph here. You can see that our products have more energy in them than our reactants did because it was absorbed. Does that make sense? I hope so. If not, take a moment and write down any questions before we move on. So it's important to remember that we're always going to need to put energy into bonds to break them, and we're always going to release energy whenever we make bonds. That's not what we're talking about here. When we're talking about reaction kinetics, we're talking about the overall changes of energy in the reaction. We're always going to need to put some amount of energy into our reactants to get them to react. And once they react with each other and make new bonds, they're always going to release some amount of energy. So we'll always get this kind of hill if we look at the energy change. What we're really interested in here is the difference in energy between the reactants and the products. Notice that we can get the same kind of shaped hill in both cases, but still wind up with energy either being released in the case of our exothermic reactions or absorbed in the case of our endothermic reactions. This is really an important concept to get straight in your head. So if you have any questions about it, you really should write them down. A really useful concept when considering reaction kinetics is enthalpy. Enthalpy is an amount of potential energy stored in a substance. Its units are in kilojoules per mole. And so what we're really interested in over the course of a reaction is the change in the enthalpy of our substances, the delta H value. If delta H is negative, that means that we have less energy at the end than we started with. That's the hallmark of an exothermic process. If delta H is positive, that's the hallmark of an endothermic process. Reference table I lists the delta H values for a whole bunch of different chemical and physical processes. For chemical reactions, delta H is called the heat of the reaction. For dissolving, which is what's at the bottom of reference table I, delta H would be called the heat of solution. And it's also really important to remember that at the bottom of the chart, below everything else, we've got a little note to ourselves reminding us that a negative sign indicates an exothermic reaction and a positive sign indicates an endothermic reaction. It's also really important to remember that reference table I gives us twice as much information. We can write the reverse of any of these reactions so that the products become the reactants and the reactants become the products, reverse the arrow, and the delta H value will be equal but opposite in sign. So we have twice as much information from this chart than what we're being shown just by looking at it. If you have any questions about reference table I and what it is and how we use it, now would be a good time to write them down before we move on. Let's consider endothermic reactions first. The general formula here would be something like this. A plus B plus energy yields C plus D. Notice that the energy is on the reactant side of the arrow if we want to write it into the equation. Since energy is on the reactant side, it's absorbed. It's absorbed from the environment, so the environment's temperature is going to decrease. The products are going to have more energy than the reactants. That energy is going to be stored in their bonds. And so as a result, the products are going to be less stable than the reactants were. Stability is kind of a squishy qualitative way of saying this, but the bottom line is that if you've stored more energy in a substance, that substance is now less stable than it was to begin with. A good example of an endothermic reaction would be how we make explosives. We have to store energy in the bonds of the explosives. So here's our friend TNT from unit two. We had to store energy in the bonds of those TNT molecules in order to produce the TNT that you see in this picture. Let's look at a general example that deals with an endothermic reaction. This is on page five of your unit nine packet. For the reaction A plus B yields C, the enthalpy of A is 40 kilojoules, the enthalpy of B is 20 kilojoules, and the enthalpy of C is 110 kilojoules. I wanna know how much energy is absorbed during the reaction, what the delta H value is for the reaction, and then we should rewrite the equation to show the conservation of energy. Pause the video and try this on your own, and then we'll do it together. 
So in order to figure out how much energy is absorbed, I need the total amount of energy in my product of 110 kilojoules, and I'm going to subtract the total amount of energy in my reactants, which is 60 kilojoules. That gives me a final answer of 50 kilojoules. This is an endothermic reaction, so I had to put 50 kilojoules in. It's positive 50 kilojoules for delta H. And if I want to rewrite this to show the conservation of energy, I've got A plus B plus 50 kilojoules of energy yields C. You definitely want to jot down any notes that you have if you have any questions about this before you move on. Here's a real life example taken off of reference table I. N2 plus O2 yields 2NO, and the delta H value for this is positive 182.6 kilojoules. Delta H is positive. We know it's an endothermic reaction as a result. And what this is telling us is that for every two moles of NO that we produce, we're going to need to put in 182.6 kilojoules of energy. Of course, if we wanted to make one mole of NO, we could just divide 182.6 by two in order to get our answer. We also know that NO is an unstable compound compared to nitrogen and oxygen. Again, if you have any questions about any of this, you should write them down before we move on. Exothermic reactions have a different kind of general formula. In the general formula for an exothermic reaction, the energy is on the product side. As a result, energy is released, which means the temperature of our surroundings is going to increase. The products are going to have less energy in them than the reactants did stored in their bonds. And so as a result, the products are more stable than the reactants were. This is of course what happens when an explosive explodes. So here's TNT being blown off and you can see the evidence that a tremendous amount of energy was released as a result of the detonation of this explosive. Let's try a general example from page six in our unit nine packet. Here is an exothermic reaction. There are the enthalpy values, the same three questions. Pause the video, try it on your own, and then when you're ready, we'll go through it together. So in order to figure out how much energy is released during this reaction, I'm just going to take the energy in my products, 30 kilojoules, and subtract the energy from my reactants, 100 kilojoules, in order to get 70 kilojoules. Of course, delta H is negative 70, and hopefully this makes sense. 30 minus 100 is actually negative 70, which is what that negative means. That energy was released. Rewriting the equation to show the conservation of energy, you can see that I placed 70 kilojoules of energy on the product side of my reaction. Notice that I didn't write negative 70. The fact that it's on the product side is what the negative means. But the value is still 70 kilojoules. Here's a real example from table I. We've got carbon plus oxygen yielding CO2. It's got a delta H of negative 393.5 kilojoules. This is an exothermic reaction as shown by the negative delta H value. And in order to produce one mole of CO2, we're going to release 393.5 kilojoules of energy. If I wanted to figure out how much energy was released from the production of four moles of CO2, I would just multiply that by four. CO2 is a stable product compared to the reactants that we produced it from. If you have any questions about any of this, you should definitely take a moment here at the end and write them down before we wrap up. Thanks so much for watching our discussion of chemical kinetics. Make sure you can do the following things here at the end. Make sure that you can compare and contrast exothermic and endothermic reactions and relate them to the concept of enthalpy. What's happening to the enthalpy of our substances over the course of the process. Also make sure that you can use table I and provided information to figure out if a process is exothermic or endothermic or how much energy will be produced or released according to the table I equations. If you can do those things, you're doing great. If not, that's okay too. Take a moment, write down any questions that you have. You can always leave them in the comments below the video or you can always get in touch with me. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.